All right, he's, he's really been the man behind. Something. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mika. Yes. Okay. He's been the man some of, behind some of President Trump's most controversial policies and speeches. Now a new book is taking a closer look at Stephen Miller and his impact on the administration. Joining us now, investigative reporter Jean Guerrero. She's the author of the new book entitled Hate Monger, Stephen Miller, Donald Trump and the White Nationalist Agenda. Joe. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously even the title is extraordinarily harsh. But yeah. if you just do a basic Google search, Gene, you see that, of course, David Duke praising uh, Donald Trump time and time again uh, for his policies after Charlottesville. And you see Stephen Miller as a Senate aide uh, passing around uh, articles written in white, uh, white nationalist uh, publications. And even uh, being praised by uh, white nationalist Richard Spencer. What did you find out uh, in researching your book? Yeah, Stephen Miller is a case study in radicalization. In my book, Hate Monger, I show how he was indoctrinated during a difficult time in his life. You know, his family had lost a lot of money. He was feeling displaced. And this is when he meets a conservative writer uh, through his high school named David Horowitz, who introduces Stephen Miller to the fantasy that he needs to save the United States from certain destruction in the form of too many brown and black people coming here. Uh, this is a man who ends up becoming like a father figure to Stephen Miller and who believes that the only real racism is racism against white men. And, you know, I obtained emails showing Horowitz, uh, you know, shaping Stephen Miller's career, um, feeding explosive talking points for the Trump campaign, feeding policies through Miller that you saw uh, Trump ad um, adopting thereafter. Um, so Miller really, with his help and the help of other extremist mentors, learned how to launder white supremacist uh, viewpoints through the language of heritage, through the language of economics, and through the language of national security in order to make it palatable to the mainstream. That's that's really what I what I show in my book. So Stephen Miller, of course, had a pretty remarkable rise, Gene, from a congressional aide uh, who would pepper reporters inboxes with talking points about immigration uh, to being one of Jeff Sessions when he was senator of Alabama, uh, one of his top advisors to then moving to the Trump campaign and now being, of course, a powerful voice in the building behind me. Talk a little bit about what you, how you see his influence, those ideas that you're talking about now being acted into policy, how you're seeing it drive uh, day in and day out, being generated from the West Wing. What sort of imprint have you seen Miller leave? Well, so I, I truly believe, uh, you know, after reporting for this book, Hate Monger, that if you want to understand the disaster that we're living today in 2020, you have to understand Stephen Miller. He, Stephen, Miller Stephen Miller is a public relations flack who, at the age of 31, with little policy experience, was put in charge of making policies for this country. And from day one in the White House, he began to narrow the focus of the Department of Homeland Security away from its focus of protecting the American people from its a broad mandate of protecting them from terrorism, protecting them from public health crises like the pandemic, into something that was laser focused on his obsession, keeping brown and black people out of this country, um, it, mostly asylum seekers and refugees, people who in most cases didn't break any laws, not not criminals and cartels like Trump likes to say, but truly families. Um, and for Stephen Miller, as I show in my book, Hate Monger, it's about re-engineering the demographics into this country. In the book, I connect the dots between everything that Miller does and his white supremacist influences. For example, Miller pulled policies directly from think tanks that were created by white supremacists who believe in population control for non-white people. He repeatedly disregarded the input of national security ex experts to push through his white nationalist agenda. And as a result of this, you know, from my conversations with White House officials for the book, Americans have been left vulnerable to a range of real threats, including the public health crisis that we're seeing today. Gene, Gene this is uh, Michael Steele. Uh, to, to pick up on that, that re-engineering part of this, uh, of this narrative in your book, how, how has he been able to get the Republican establishment, of which he presumably has been outside of, 
to so conform in, in such a short time to this sort of white supremacist narrative. Now, is that something that sort of sort of baked into the party uh, so it was an easy transition? What, what's your analysis and what does your, your, your book tell us about how he was able to broaden the scope of that philosophy to not just policy, but to the body politic as a whole? Well, that's a great question. And it has to do with, as I show in the book, that Stephen Miller uh, was instrumental in Trump's win in 2016 because of his anti-immigrant agenda. So the Republican Party began to realize that this, this anti-immigrant hostility was really speaking to voters. And, and beyond that, the, the, a big part of the reason he's been so influential in the White House is that Stephen Miller gets Donald Trump in a way that I believe no one else in the White House does. Um, part of this has roots in his childhood, which I delve into in the book. Uh, you know, Stephen Miller's father is a real estate investor who is described to me as being very Trump-like, was plagued by bankruptcies and numerous legal disputes. Uh, so part of it is he, he grew up in a similar family. The other thing is that Stephen Miller, and this part is really important, Stephen Miller always encourages Trump's most aggressive and most violent impulses, which, which Trump appreciates, because every time he listens to a more moderate advisor, he gets pummeled and ridiculed by his base as weak, which Trump hates. He wants to be seen as a killer, and Stephen Miller shares his instincts for violence, and he has his his, um, you know, he, he has his fingers on the pulse of his most violent voting base who want, who want, you know, to see these really hostile policies separating children from their parents, um, you know, systematically turning away the, the most vulnerable, uh, most desperate people um, at the U.S.-Mexico border. So all of these very cruel policies, uh, he needs, he needs uh, the, you know, hatred in order to rally people around these policies, and he's been very effective at getting that hatred through systematic demonization of immigrants, and as well as the people who support them in the Democratic Party. Yeah, you know, what, what's fascinating is that you are so right. All of the aides that have come in and out of the White House, I mean, there have just been a steady stream, an unprecedented stream. The one person who has held on is Stephen Miller, because Stephen Miller always plays to the lowest common de denominator when it comes uh, to anti-immigrant uh, racist uh, uh, rhetoric. Well, the book is Hate Monger, Stephen Miller, Donald Trump, and the White Nationalist Agenda. Gene Guerrero, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. Miki. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.